just past 5 a.m. and Hillary is packing her bag. She's leaving. She's fed up. So we had problems with our tip permit. Previous owner for hours did not cancel it. Otherwise it creates hassles like it is for us to try and get one to go back in. Somehow they ended up sending some special bloke up from Mexico who is going to be at the Mexican consulate for yesterday and today. So that's Hillary's thing today. Last time on Adventure Adrift, we did a bit of exploring around San Diego, doing some boat supply shopping and visiting Balboa Park. We received a rather unpleasant surprise of stolen oars, and then headed over to a dock at the boatyard to get to work on our solar upgrade. Beginning by removing our old bimini panels and wind generator so we could start with a blank slate. Not wanting to spend thousands on a custom arch, we decided to make our own from one inch stainless tubing and got to work planning and sketching. So I have a train to catch at 6.06 .06 and it takes about three hours to get up to LA. The Mexican tip or temporary import permit is a document that is required for anyone bringing a vehicle or boat into Mexico. In recent years, a tip has become easier to obtain via an online application. We filled out the online application, but had it promptly rejected due to the fact that there was already an active tip for our boat. This seems to be a common issue, as we have heard many other southbound cruisers facing similar difficulties. Mexico will not allow the boat to re-enter Mexican waters with a new owner, even if you have the documents to prove that you bought it, without the previous owner first canceling their tip. You still have one that it's, I guess it's yeah. valid and it's not, the old owner. not yeah. high, it's not letting you okay. the process of to give you a new one. Uh -huh. Cancellation form and, and then you can, you can, you can apply for another one. Even with the day specifically reserved for canceling old tips, they wouldn't just cancel the tip straight away. I had to apply for one, be rejected, then cancel the old tip, and then reapply again for a new one. All right, so Hillary is uh, Hillary's doing some errands, so I'm here working by myself. I'm trying to now drill holes through the stainless, which is a lot harder than cutting it, I think, it seems like. While I spent the day dealing with paperwork, Ty was hard at work assembling the homemade structure that we were building from one inch stainless tubing to hold our new solar panels. With the help of some tools loaned to us from our friends on Muskoka, we were able to cut and begin to assemble the stainless tubing. Hillary, you have a of, the of course, working on the dock at the boatyard, you have to do a little improvising. So all of this hard work was done on a makeshift workbench, made up of some scrounged together materials. But best of all, it came with an attached trash can. So had a successful trip up to Los Angeles yesterday, up to the Consular Mexicano. Consular? I don't know. It's Consular something. To the Mexican consulate. Have official paperwork here saying that our old, well, the previous owner's import permit is cancelled. And we have a new one now for us. So that's exciting. So it's can... official. One less hassle to deal with when we get to Ensenada. Ensenada. So we'll check in. Yeah. So we have all, almost all the paperwork. We still have to get our um, immigration thing we have to do and right. our fishing license, but the one that was going to be tricky, we got that canceled now. You had a good day. Well, I don't know if you had a good day. You got stuff done yesterday. Yeah, got a bit more to do today. Hope, we're hoping by the end of the day we'll have the solar panels up behind us here. A few more braces to cut. We're going to cut those now. Hopefully we can put it all together and see how it looks. Oh, and the battery guy's coming today. He just emailed oh, me. Oh, good. He's going to send his bloke out to take a look at the batteries for us, so we can uh, cool. get that underway. Alright, let's get to work. All right. We also needed to make sure that the new solar structure would be clear of all moving parts when underway, including our boom, winch handles, and wind vane. I 
found a friend. It's a dead sea lion. Dead. Hillary's gonna go check him out. He's gonna be our new pet on Karuna. Uh -uh. As you can see, the shadow of the great Hillary slowly approaching the vicious sea lion. He has noticed her and he is about to attack. In the sea lion's eyes, an evil twinkle. Very aggressive. Known to bite off the legs of humans in one foul swoop. Um, I oh know, he's just asleep. Good morning. So behind is that marine layer's floating off real quick smart. Behind it started a little, but as you can see up here, pretty darn solid. So we're happy with it so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Pretty much done. We're gonna add one extra bracing uh, verticals. Problem we had is we can't find any 45 degree. They make a 45 degree deck fitting. They make a 60 degree. Anyway, and we'll run that across horizontal. Previous holes from the deck, uh, the cleats were where the mount is now. Got to run the wiring, the controllers yet. Hillary's been trying to sell off our stuff. But don't write us about that, because they'll be gone. So our big ones will be the radar at this point. So that's all we're gonna do, whatever. Hat's very wet. Wet? She has a problem with hair. She has too much of it. But if I brush it, it doesn't fall out as much. So I brush it a lot. Are you ready to get to work now, Hillary? Yes. Like right now? No. We had decided to ditch our bimini, putting it, our old panels, and our older, inefficient wind and water generator up for sale on Craigslist. Our main goal was to have something nice and sturdy and solid mounting. Screw one of it. And it looked like we had come up with a structure that would work. Right. The supports really that held it up were through bolted into the deck and brought down to the existing stern rail. As a part of our project, we had decided to move our radar from a stern pole to a mast mount to eliminate as much shading on the panels as possible. While Ty was up the mast, he also rehung our radar deflector, which had been blown down a few weeks earlier in the gale forced winds that we had ridden out at Smuggler's Cove. So, what should I do first? Punch a hole and drill it in? Yeah, I can't get sideways. Oh, there's a big rain coming, I think. I can see it on the other side now. Alright, here we go. Drilling into our mast. Frickin' wet. Get done. Of course, we picked a great day for Ty to spend hours up the mast working complete with our second rainstorm that we experienced while in San Diego. To attach it to the mast, we opted to drill tap screws, which is basically a process where you create your own thread for a screw. We had never done this before, but opted for this over rivets because it would be easier to remove or change out in the future. And then it came time to drill the large hole in the mast for the radar cable. One of the tools that we had borrowed from our friend was electrician's fish tape. We use this handy device to run the cable up the mast. Okay. We were lucky that we had enough cable to run it down, under the floor, and then partway up the mast. Before screwing the mount on permanently, we covered it with plumber's tape to create a barrier between the two metals.
To wire in our solar, we had MC4 connectors, which are special waterproof connectors for solar panels. A special crimping tool is required. Even though this is a standard connector, we couldn't seem to find anyone in town that had a crimper for it, even after calling virtually every marine and electronic shop around. Finally, we ended up back at the place where we had bought the panels, which seemed to be the only place in town that even knew what the connectors or crimpers were. I made a mistake. We didn't know their, their different ends. Because we're trying to do stuff 10 miles away from the boat. Find out one of the places in town here has the tool. With the majority of our work complete, we cleared out of the boatyard, giving them their dock space back. Then we headed over to the guest dock to wrap up the last few bits of our project. Since neither one of us has a technical background or knows much about electricity, we spent days trying to figure out how to wire everything together. We need to have power turned off and such? Eh, maybe. You should turn stuff off. <laughs> Down to here, probably. Yeah, so six. 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 And then so this is the way we learn. We don't really know anything. We just kind of like imagine it. The controller will convert it down to 12 volts. <laughs> I think that's how it works. Okay. Uh, for our panels. So these are the two panels. The starboard one then will go here through the 10 amp fuse. Through the 10 gauge up into the positive on the PV, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, the negative, this should be the negative PV, yep. this yellow one. Yep. That's directly from the panel. And then from the battery, we should have a red that runs over here, 10 gauge, uh -huh. to a 35 amp fuse, which will join the jumper, and then it'll run off into the relay when we rehook that up. Okay. The negatives should both run from here to the negative bus. Uh -huh and from here all the way down to this negative bus. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Pretty lights. Pretty lights. So all up, pretty good price that we spent on getting our solar installation done. We added up, it was just under 1500 I think. Solar panels were around about $290 each panel, 320 watts. Tubing you got? The tubing was it was about a dollar sixty a foot. We got eighty feet of it. Most expensive part of the solar was all the fittings, mm -hmm. eleven to twenty bucks each, depending on the type of fitting. We have a lot of those. Two charge controllers, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the little Bluetooth dongles that go with each one, so we can monitor the batteries via our phone on Bluetooth. Yep, and you can update the settings for everything on there as yeah. well. But big savings and much more solid than than what we had before. Solar panels are up and fully wired in. Getting new batteries coming today. It is 9.24 in the morning. About 95 to 100 watts coming out of one of the panels. Giving us seven and a half amps. Other panels, about 112 watts, giving us eight amps. What did I say, maybe 15 amps then total. Should get us charged up in no time. Excited, looks good. With our projects coming together, of course, there are always some more bits and pieces that we needed. We found ourselves making several trips back to the marine shop to pick up nuts, bolts, and other odds and ends. How's it going? We're ready, man. The batteries that we had on Varuna were older and had not been holding a charge very well. There was something that we knew needed replacing, but we had been waiting until we had a good way of keeping them charged before investing in some new ones. While still expensive, we believe we got a decent deal. 
keeping the same amp hours, but upgrading to the Life Plant brand, which had an excellent reputation. And then the batteries that we replaced, that was most expensive. That was something we couldn't really get around. Those are just expensive, whatever way you look at it. Yep. About 1400 mm -hmm. and a bit. Uh, that was for two new six volt Lifeline batteries, yep. 400 amp hours each, and a 24, group 24 starter battery mm -hmm. as well. Um, we went with a more expensive six volt than before. We did have Full River. Cost us about an extra hundred bucks to go with Lifeline. Um, we heard the reputation. We heard the they're warranty. supposed to last a really long time. Yeah. Really good things about really them. So. so, yeah. So that's that. And then yeah. that was with installation, and they took away our old batteries for us as well. Yeah. Finally, the end of the boat work was in sight, and we prepared to leave the guest dock and head back out to the anchorage. As always guys, thank you very much for watching, and if you're curious to know more about our actual costs and spending habits, uh, we do share all that in detail with our patrons. Uh, just for time limitations here, we'd like to give you a general idea of how much things cost. Yeah. That's all for this time guys. If you liked the video, we'd love a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And of course, leave us your comments down below so we can read them later on. Yeah, and if you haven't already subscribed, there's a link over here on the side and also down below. And if you're interested in becoming a part of our patron crew, um, check out the link just on the side here. Cheers guys, see Thanks. you later.